ce ne sono sopra le altre, no? Sì. Nella piccola sigla di quella diffusa di nuovo, sono quelli pronti, 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 I started a few minutes early on this early Tipsy Tuesday. Hi, Laura. And I started early because my absolute favorite song in the world came on in this bar. Give Me Shelter by the Rolling Stones. So I was like, I'm going to go ahead and start now so that it's playing as people jump on. Hi, Mom. Your favorite too, I know. Hi Laura. Hi BB. Hi Deb. I hope everybody can hear me okay. Music's a little loud here. But that's good because we're in a, a bar that is open and trying to survive a pandemic. People still <laughs> jumping on here. Hi Gloria. Good to see you, John. Let's see. Richard in Mexico. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Jeanette. Okay, so today I am coming to you from the Wisdomless Club in Rome. It's a very unusual bar not what you would expect to find in Rome. It's more like a speakeasy, but it's a really, really cool place. And um, let me see if I can turn you around real quick here. Uh, so you can see, like it just, I don't wanna be too obvious what I'm doing here. But you can see that it kinda looks like a, speakeasy type bar it's really a cool place um, and again not something that you see in Rome often because um, it's so non-traditional big plush leather chairs they have some taxidermy stuff under the bar there's a skull um, lots of hardwood dark wood there's a cheetah over there there's a rattlesnake right beside me. Let me see if I can show you the snake at least. Can you see? No, you can't see the snake. Uh, you can see the snake with that. Kind of, maybe. No, you can't see the snake. Anyway, I should give you a, a whole tour of this place. Maybe at the end. Uh, Death and Company NYC, a very similar vibe to that bar. Um, and it also has a tattoo parlor attached to it. The Wismless Tattoo Parlor. But what surprises a lot of people is that even though it's this, yes, Cindy, give me shelter, my favorite song, that's why I started when this came on. Um, this bar is actually owned by a super traditional Catholic, uh, Fabrizio. He, um, he's part of the confraternity of the uh, Latin Mass Society here in Rome, um, also covered in tattoos. Um, so you see in this bar a lot of people from the Vatican, a lot of, uh, yeah, Tristram Shandy, Fabrizio. Um, yeah, so this is his bar. Uh, you'll see a lot of people from the Vatican here, a lot of people in the Vatican media, and a lot of people from the Latin Mass Church hang out here. And uh, it's just a really fun place. A lot of the seminarians from the North American College come here as well. Um, they have like a, a weekly hang out in this bar. Uh, yeah, if you come here, you can meet Fabrizio. You can follow him on Instagram too. So Wisdomless Club on Instagram and uh, the owner's Twitter handle is Tristam Shandy. And he uh, wrote a book. Don Eard. Yeah, she hangs out here too. Um, so I'm having a drink here tonight. This is, uh, the bartender just made it for me. It's a Negroni with red peppers, roasted red peppers. So it's a, a vermouth with a roasted red pepper gin, 
and uh, it's really good. It tastes like red peppers. And it's in a cool glass. So um, we had to start early today. I was originally going to do it from home at the usual time, but uh, Rome now has a... It's not like a full lockdown like we had in the spring, um, but they're tightening up the restrictions on what we can do. So all bars, restaurants, cafes, things like that, they have to shut down to indoor seating by 6 p.m. Um, they can still do takeout up until I think midnight. Uh, so this bar usually opens at 6 p.m., but now they're closing at 6 p.m. And so I wanted to be able to support the bars while we still can. Um, I was going to do it at home because I thought it would be too weird to have it out so early. But then I realized that our time changed and yours didn't. And so it's 5 o'clock here. Um, so next week it'll be 6 o'clock here when it's... It'll be like back to normal, however the time zones work. Um, so I thought I could still make it into a bar this week while it's still an okay time to have an alcoholic drink. I know some of you it's like 9 a.m., but... It is 2020 after all. Um, so yeah, that's our numbers are going up, hospitalizations are going up, and so Rome is being, or Italy rather, is being a bit overly cautious and shutting some things down again. So it's it's not the full lockdown like I said that we had in the spring, um, but there's a curfew from midnight to 5 a.m. Uh, they're able to shut down busy piazzas starting at 9 p.m. Um, we're still able to go from region to region and travel on public transportation, but they say only do it if you need to. We don't, they're not like saying you can only do it if you need to, but they're kind of recommending it. So it's possible that more restrictions will come. Uh, but for now, this is it. Churches are still open, masses are still happening, bars are still open. Like this bar is open from 12 to 6 because apparently the virus is taking its midday nap during those hours, so there's no contagions between 12 and 6. Um, I think really that the whole point of this shutdown at night is because that's when more people gather, so they don't want the bars open where people are gathering and having fun. They don't want the restaurants open for dinner uh, because more people go to dinner than they would go to lunch. Um, so I understand why they're doing it. I don't necessarily agree with it, but it doesn't really matter what I think anyway because I don't make the rules. Um, but anyway, I understand the reasoning behind what they're doing. And yeah, this bar is awesome. So again, if you're just joining, I'm drinking a Negroni. The bartender made this for me. Negroni with um, what is, oh, bell pepper. Roasted red pepper gin with vermouth. She asked if I wanted something boozy, and I said, sure, bring me something boozy. So that's what she brought me. Um, today, since Halloween is at the end of the week, yes, yeah, someone did cough. There was a guy in here who's coughed a few times, but I don't think he has it. <laughs> I cough sometimes, too. Um, but I thought since the end of this week is Halloween, and then we have All Saints Day. Oh. Now they're playing Velvet Underground. My mom definitely needs to visit this bar. Um, how do you say boozy in Italian? She just said boozy. She speaks English. She didn't even try to speak to me in Italian. Like I don't, I don't look like I speak Italian because I don't. Um, so she just said boozy. So anyway, Halloween's coming up. All Saints, All Souls, and so. I wrote this article a long time ago called uh, Relics and Incorruptibles, and it's all about how Catholics are like the original Goths, basically. And I talk about saints and relics and incorruptible bodies. And so if you're not on my mailing list, you can go to my website, thecatholictraveler.com. You can sign up for that. I'm going to talk about some of those things, but I actually I'll send out an email with all the pictures and some videos and more explanations on stuff that's just really cool about our Catholic faith and especially how it ties in 
to things here around Rome. So first off, Halloween. They don't really do Halloween here like we do in America. Uh, they're kind of getting a little more into that. They'll do kind of trick-or-treating, but places don't really know what's going on. So if you knock on a door, people are like, what are you doing here? Um, kids will go from store to store and and uh, like the stores will give them like pencils or just whatever they have laying around. So it hasn't quite caught on. But the other day my wife noticed that there is a um, there's a pop-up Halloween shop selling costumes like right by the Vatican. It's not connected to the Vatican, of course, but it's near there in that area. So I guess they are kind of getting into the Halloween spirit. Um, but what you do see here is you'll see that kids dress up for saints around All Saints Day. So you'll see them walking around the street dressed up in saint costumes. So kind of like what some of the churches back home try to do with their trunk retreats and they encourage kids to dress up as saints instead of, I don't know, monsters. So then, uh, what else? Oh, I like to talk about, like when I'm showing people around Rome, I like to show them some of the more bizarre relics that we have. Because if you're Catholic and you hear about these things all the time, like body parts, it's not really that shocking. Maybe it is if you start to think about it, but you're kind of used to it. But I get a lot of non-Catholics on my pilgrimages and on my day tours. They're just along for the journey. They might be with a friend or something like that. And then I'll be like, oh, and by the way, here's the head of St. Catherine. And they're like, wait, what? And you know, we kind of just, I guess, take it for granted that we have body parts everywhere. But that's one of the ones I like to talk about is St. Catherine because she's from Siena, but she lived here in Rome, um, kind of near the Pantheon. If you're not familiar with Rome, there's a church right behind the Pantheon, and that was her parish here in Rome. And so when she died, they buried her in that church. And the story goes that one day, her priest knew that Siena would want something to remember her by. And so he went down to her tomb and opened it up and her body was incorruptible. So she had not decayed. Maybe she decayed a little, but not as much as someone should have. And her head miraculously popped off and he shipped that head up to Siena. So if you ever visit Siena, her head is actually on display in her church there, the Church of San Domenico. And it's just there. Like you walk in, there's that coffin guy again. You walk in and it's in this reliquary and her face is just staring at you. And you can make out like the eyebrows, the nose, the teeth. And again, she's been dead for what, like 600 years? So it doesn't look perfect, but I mean, there's still skin. So that really freaks people out. Um, and now the head is locked up in that church. Three people have the keys. And the reason is because they used to process it through the streets of Siena. But one year as they were processing it down the street, again, total Catholic thing that we would take a, a head and march it down the street. Um, but at one point, as they were processing it down the street, somebody tried to steal it. And so they ran, jumped up, grabbed the head, but, which was on a pillow, but they didn't have a good hold of it. And so it fell off and kind of rolled down the street. And you can actually see her mouth, like there's a piece, like a little chunk taken out of her lip. And that's from when it rolled down the street. So now they keep it locked up. And so the most of her body is in Santa Maria Sopra Minerva, which is right behind the Pantheon, which that church has been closed for over a year. They, did, they were doing some restoration work, and it's a gorgeous church. It's one of the few uh, churches with a Gothic feel on the inside. Um, but, uh, yeah, so her body is there under the altar, and actually on her feast day, they open up the altar, and you can actually go in and venerate the tomb. Um, but I say most of her body, so her head is in Siena. She has a finger in Siena. One of her arms is in a convent uh, in Rome. And 
I can't remember what they have in Venice. They either have they either have her foot or her arm in a church in Venice, but she's all over the place. So that always gets people. Um, but she's not the only one that we have that's all over. I mean, you can walk into pretty much any church in Rome and see some sort of random body part. St. Francis Xavier, we have his arm at the Church of the Jesu. So you just have his arm on display. Um, Santa Croce in Jerusalem has the finger of Doubting Thomas. So you walk in there and you see these beautiful relics from the Passion of Christ. And then in one of the reliquaries, there's a finger. And it's the finger of Doubting Thomas. Um, we have... Uh, what else do we have that's interesting? Yeah, there's random leg bones. Some churches, like uh, Sant'Ignazio, they have a whole wall of relics. And they're not marked. I mean, they are, like, relics usually have, like, a little seal on them. And it's written in Latin what it is. Um, but we can't get close enough to see it. But there's just, there's a bunch of skulls, a bunch of arms, some leg bones, a couple ribs. And they're just all up there. And, again, I kind of, I'm used to it. So when I'm walking people around that aren't Catholic or aren't really familiar with our relics, it, it shocks them and freaks them out. And so that's why I like to talk about it, especially around Halloween, because, you know, people are talking about ghosts and monsters. And I'm like, come on, I have a, I have a church down the street that has an incorruptible head in it. Um, why does the church keep body parts in their churches so uh, there's there's a saying I, I don't know who said it maybe a saint or something or somebody smarter than me but you know your body is yours but when you become a saint your body belongs to the church and so back in the Middle Ages people would fight over relics and things like that and so sometimes somebody would open a tomb take an arm move a head take a foot bring a toe and so body parts got moved all around. But we venerate these people because they're in heaven. Um, do they just cut off body parts? Yeah, there's actually, there's, um, there's a group here in Rome, a group of sisters, and their job is to divvy up relics. And so I don't really know how they, like who goes in and breaks off a finger, um, but they, take the bones and they chip them down to really tiny pieces, put them in the little reliquaries that then go to churches or even, it's harder now for people to get them, but people used to be able to get them. You used to be able to just go up to this uh, this place, it's near St. Mary Major, and say, hey, I'd like to get a relic of St. Peter. And they'd be like, okay, here you go. And it was very easy. And now it's nearly impossible without your bishop writing a letter and getting approval for you. Um, so I mentioned that St. Catherine is incorruptible, not fully decayed. But if you look, again, the email I send out has pictures of some incorruptibles. She doesn't look great, but there are some that look really good, like uh, St. Bernadette um, in France looks alive, like basically her skin, they say it's still soft, and even like moist um, Saint Rita uh, she's another one that is kind of creepy because you know thousands of people a year visit her tomb this is in Italy it's in Umbria they'll visit her tomb and she is like laid out flat um, you can get I don't know maybe 10 15 feet away from her tomb and you can see her face, you can see her hands folded. But it's said, and it's been reported by many, many people, that while people are praying in front of her tomb, sometimes she'll like turn her head and look over at them, or she'll open her eyes. Um, there have been reports of people seeing her body levitate. And like this is, it's cool, I guess, but it's also really scary. <laughs> I mean, I can't imagine what I would do if I was praying in front of a tomb and all of a sudden the body, like, levitated and then looked over at me. And then, 
we also have things like um, churches that will decorate with bones. So there's a very famous one here in Rome, the Capuchin Crypt. Um, and they have, I think it's the bones of over 4,000 monks. And this guy one day just was like, hey, I think I'm going to dig up all these tombs and I'm going to decorate our chapels with bones. And everybody was like, oh, okay. Sounds like a good idea. And so there are four, I think there's four or five rooms. I can't remember right now. Um, and each one is decorated with bones. But he didn't just like throw bodies up on the wall. He took like pelvises and he made a chapel of the pelvises. And so all three of the four walls are covered in pelvises. There are chandeliers made of pelvises. And then in another room, it's all, I don't know, femurs. And so he's decorated stuff with femur bones. There's like a clock on the wall made of bones. And I don't take groups there anymore because they've changed. It's like a whole museum now. Um, really nice museum. But uh, I took a group there once and it was, it was a pilgrimage group. So it was mostly Catholics. But I had this one lady. She was probably around 65, I think. And the whole trip, she kept reminding me, like, I'm not Catholic. But she was with, like, her daughter or something like that. She's like, I'm not Catholic, but I think that, you know, these churches are really pretty. And she would go to Mass with us and all that stuff. And she would listen to my stories about saints and relics. And she'd be like, well, those relics are kind of weird, but, but you know, I'm not Catholic, so I, I don't really understand. And then I took her, I took the group to the Capuchin Crypt. I didn't really tell them anything about it until we got there. They are just like, all right, we're going to go to this, uh, this church they call the Bone Church in Rome. And walked everybody through there, explained the rooms, and then... When we got out, I'm not going to say exactly what she said because, again, this like super sweet lady, but there was some profanity <laughs> about how messed up it was. And it was just so unexpected coming out of her mouth. And again, I'm used to it, so I don't think like anything of a chapel made of pelvises, but for someone from like the Bible Belt who's a Baptist walking through a chapel of pelvises with chandeliers made of pelvises she had some words about that but she was a good sport I've had quite a few people say some similar things too um, about that chapel and that's not even the best one like there's I've never been to Sicily which is crazy I need to go to Sicily but they apparently have really good chapels of bones <laughs> Yes, Laura, those Baptists. Don't worry, you'll be one of us soon. So, uh, what else did I want to talk about? So those are like saint relics, but they're also really, really creepy relics. So in Rome, we have this church, Santa Sabina. And this is the church where St. Dominic lived. It's where he founded the uh, Dominicans. Um, and there's a story that he would be in this church praying just for hours on end. And one day, he was deep in prayer. I guess it was one night probably. He was deep in prayer. And Satan showed up at the church. And he wanted to distract Dominic from these overnight prayers that he would have. And so he picked up this black stone and he threw it into the church and it landed right beside St. Dominic. And of course, Dominic didn't flinch. Um, but the church kept that, it's weird to call it a relic, um, but they kept this stone. It's called the Devil's Stone. And it's this black stone and it's almost pushed completely flat um, because when it hit the ground. And on top, there are three indentations where like his... I don't know, you wouldn't call the devil's fingers claw marks or something, but where he picked it up and threw it. 
And so they just have it on this little pedestal right beside the spot where it landed near Dominic. So that's a really creepy Halloween-y relic to have. Um, one of the few relics of the devil that's, that's here in Rome. Um, and the other relic, and this is on, I know some people have like bucket lists of where they want to travel and things like that. I have a bucket list of relics that I want to see. And the one I really, really, really want to see, it's in the church of San Marco, which if you've ever been to Rome, I'm sure you know of the wedding cake or the Victor Emmanuel monument. It's kind of right in the center of town near the Colosseum, um, big white building, very modern. San Marco is the church right in front of that. And so this is the spot where St. Mark, the evangelist, lived. Um, it's where he wrote his gospel. Um, it wasn't a church at the time, of course. It was a, like a little hovel. Um, but now there's a church built on top. It's the Church of San Marco. And it's Venice's church here in Rome because um, Venice has his body, so this is their church. But anyway, they have the relics of the seven plagues. I don't know how or why. Like, I don't know who was thinking like to collect a, a locust or something. Um, and they're only on display once a year. It's during Lent. They bring them out uh, on the church's station day. So there's one day of the year that this church has a special mass and they bring out relics. They don't bring out the relic I want to see. It's kept in the sacristy and only certain people get to see it. But that relic is the vial of darkness. So you remember one of the seven plagues was darkness. And I didn't even know that this existed until, I guess it was last year, last October. I was in Jordan. I had a group there. We were at the Dead Sea and I was having dinner one night and the priest was talking about relics, Father Hammond, he lived here in Rome. And he's one of those priests who, there's, there's a lot of priests that come to Rome to study or seminarians that come to Rome to study. And they're here just to study and go home. Some of them like can't wait to get back to America. I don't understand them at all. But Father Hammond was one that did everything while he was here. Like anytime a church had a special celebration, anytime a relic was on display, he was always there. And so he was talking about some of his favorite things in Rome. And that's when I learned about the vial of darkness. And I've since heard other priests tell stories about this file. Let me get another. Oh, she didn't see me. I was going to get another drink. Anyway. Uh, she still doesn't see me. The Vial of Darkness. So he celebrated one of the station masses there um, during his time here in Rome. And after the mass, they had the relics on display. And then he went back into the sacristy and the priest was showing them the relics of the uh, plagues, which aren't on display for the public. And then he said, so like, here's the locusts or whatever. And then he said, but you don't want to see the vile darkness. And he was like, wait, what? And he was like, oh, you don't want to see that. And he was like, yeah, I do. And, which is how I feel like, I want to see it too. And the priest was like, no, 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 it's, it's, it's very intense. And so he convinced them to show him this relic. And so he brought out this vial and he said, Father Hammond said it was the darkest black he had ever seen. It was almost like it was sucking light out of the room. So it was in this glass reliquary vial and it was just like this dark matter. And yeah, he said it was the creepiest thing he had ever seen. And so I want to see it because um, I think that that would be really cool. Um, see, that's my relic bucket list is the vial of dark matter. I don't know if there are any other relics on my bucket list. Just that one. Vial of darkness does, <laughs> it does sound like a, a metal band name, death metal. Um, 
what else is very Halloweeny? Oh, the Purgatory Church. So in Rome, we have a church, Santa Croce. It's in the Prati neighborhood, kind of near Castle Sant'Angelo. And it's a relatively new church, maybe 100 or so years old, 150. Um, but there was a fire in the church. And when the guy was, the priest was like getting everything out of the fire, he found a handprint embedded in a hymnal. And I think it was a hymnal. And he, um, that's when he realized that like there was purgatory. I mean, of course, you know, we believe in purgatory, but he had proof because he saw a handprint from the dead. And then, so he started collecting things. Like people would bring in a prayer book that had something scratched in it. Like a, a wife would wake up one morning and she felt like the presence of her dead husband. And then she went to pray and she'd open her prayer book and he would have like scribbled something in there, but it would be like burned into the pages or somebody would have a um, wake up and there would be a, I don't know what the currency was back then, maybe lira or whatever, but there would be like a 10 lira. No, there wouldn't be a 10 because that would be ridiculous. It would be like a thousand lira or something um, with their dead loved one asking for prayers. And so this guy started this whole museum in the church. And a museum is a stretch. It's basically like a couple of bulletin boards behind glass where he's put some books with things from the afterlife. Um, but it's the Purgatory Museum. And it's another thing that's really cool and also really freaky to see. Because again, as Catholics, you know, we know that purgatory exists. But to see something where there's like a handprint burned into a book or there's even like footprints, like a burned in footprint and left in carpet, like someone woke up again felt the presence of a loved one who had passed and then went out into the living room and there were like burned footprints in the house like a beside a favorite chair or something so just really strange things um what else is really cool here oh all saints day no all souls day on all souls day on um, november 2nd the uh there's a church on tiber island so, you know, Tiber River runs through Rome, and then there's a little island. And on that island, there are, I think, three churches, a couple hospitals, small island. Um, let's see if I can get another drink. She's not looking. I'm not good at getting more drinks. I'm running out of time, though, because we're going to close in half an hour. Um, see, si, that's it. I got it. Um, what was I talking about? Oh, Tiber Island. So there's this confraternity. Um, where can you read about the vial of darkness, Tony? Uh, everything I told you is like all I've ever seen about it. Um, so in the email I send out around the end of the week, uh, again, if you go to my website, thecatholictraveler.com, you can sign up for my email list and I'll send it out at the end of the week. But I have, uh, I, I talk about it there. But I really haven't seen much about the vial of darkness. I've heard a few priests mention it. I've gone to the church and asked them if I could see it, and they looked at me like I was a nut. Probably because I was like asking English, like, a uh, vial of darkness? And the priest is like, what? Um, so you might have a hard time finding anything about it. Anyway, the confraternity on Tiber Island, uh, they were called the. Uh, Sacconi Rossi, which I think means like red sack or something. They had these red robes, probably means red robe. And they would go out around Rome and collect the dead uh, of the poor. So the poor people who had died in Rome and didn't have anyone to bury them. So they would collect the dead and bring them to their crypt, give them a proper burial. And then part of the deal, I guess, of giving them a proper burial was that once their bodies had decayed, they got to move the bones. And so every year now on All Souls Day, um, I'll get to your question about the relics in a minute. Uh, every day on All Souls Day, they go to, um, Grazie. 
um, every year on All Souls Day, they have this procession. They have a mass in the church on Tiber Island, and then they do a candlelight procession. It's nighttime, all the way down to the river, and which I mean, it's not that far, but they go to the river, and they light. Um, I think it's a wreath or something like that uh, to remember all of the dead who they had buried. And there's probably like 50 of these people dressed in these red robes, red hoods, um, all holding candles and like the priest is carrying the crucifix, or he's not carrying the crucifix, probably a deacon or altar server carrying the crucifix, but like processing through the street down to the river and this wreath full of candles, they let it float down the river and beautiful ceremony. But then afterwards, they go to the crypt and it's the only time of the year that this crypt is open to the public and so i would imagine they're not going to do it this year i'll probably go over there just to see because i've done it like the last three years um, but uh the crypt so you're not supposed to take pictures but i i was able to take some pictures two years ago they allowed me to take some pictures um, but again it's only open one day a year only for like two hours but you go down into the crypt and you turn the corner and there's skulls like 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 just right like right here there's like a skull on a ledge and then candles it's all candlelit leading up to um, a skeleton that they dress up and it's been a different skeleton the last couple of years uh, yeah Karen you went to my site and saw the pictures yeah you can look all this stuff is on my blog um, I just kind of condense it and send it out on uh, at the end of the week um, so you can see what I'm talking about but they have a skeleton dressed up in the uh, the red robe and then around the corner there are more bones like they have arm bones like in the shape like a cross and um, more skulls little altar and it's just it's it's interesting I, I like it I took my um, my kids a couple times and my wife but uh, there's a great picture of my youngest daughter Lily and I guess this is this was maybe three years ago and she was not amused. She was just like, I was like, all right, stand by all these skulls and take a picture. There's a picture of her just like arms crossed, making like a, a grumpy face. So I love it. What else do we have coming up? Um, oh, on November 4th, that's the day that the Holy Father has the mass for all the cardinals who died this year. And that's a mass, like I assume this year will be different, of course, but that anybody can go to, no tickets required, because nobody knows about it. It's in St. Peter's Basilica at the altar of the chair. So not the main altar, but the one behind that. And so the church is still open. The mass is later in the day. I think it's like 11 o'clock and the Pope, does that mass so if you just walk into the church you go up to like the Baldacchino area and they kind of have that closed off um, unless you're going to the mass you just say yeah I want to go to this mass and they'll let you through again I don't think that's happening this year and plus most of you aren't going to be here anyway um, but yeah you could just go to this like very intimate mass with the Holy Father and it's for the uh, Cardinals who died this year but what I really love about it is that it's the one time of year they ring the death bells at St. Peter's. And so, hi Amanda, hi Lisa, uh, hi Tony. People jumping on now. Um, yeah, so the death bells at St. Peter's. And so I've stopped going to the Mass with the Pope just so I can be in the piazza when the death bells are ringing because it's really cool I think I put those on YouTube I don't know they might be on my Facebook page they're somewhere I'll record them again this year but it's just you know St. Peter's has all these different bells they have the Angelus bells they have the uh, Ave Maria bells in the morning 
on Sunday there's some there's some bell they ring at 7 a.m. I don't know what it is of course there's the hourly bell there's the new Pope bell um, but the death bells I love those because they're just so dark and uh, I'll post them in November 4th next week that's it that's all I have about Saints somebody asked a question about that though uh Roberto, I'm shocked you haven't been to the uh, the crypt. You need to go this year. Maybe I'll see you there. What was the question I missed? Oh, why are some relics not available to be seen by the public? So a lot of these churches, including St. Peter's, they have just lots of relics. And so they're not all always on display. A lot of them bring them out just for special occasions. So on All Saints Day, which we have coming up at St. Peter's, they load up the altar, the main altar, um, the one under the Baldacchino, with relics. So these are relics that are not always on display. They're relics that they only bring out a couple times a year or maybe once a year. And we don't know what they are because we can't get close enough to see the labeling on them. Um, but there's skulls, there's leg bones, there's arm bones, there's fingers, there's all kinds of stuff. Um, and so some of these churches that I was talking about with the, uh, like the the, um, the relic of the uh, vial of darkness. When they have their station masses, they'll bring out their fancy relics. Um, so just like once a year, or a saint's feast day or something like that. It's just to keep them special. Um, that's one of the reasons they do it. So like the relic of Veronica's veil, which there's some argument about who has Veronica's veil, but St. Peter's says they have Veronica's veil. And they bring that out once a year during Lent. And that is only on display for 60 seconds. So it's just to keep them special. Uh, Laura says, I'm having a Negroni. This is a Negroni, the bar made special. It has roasted red pepper gin in it. And it's very good. This is my second one. Um, so again, I am at the bar Wisdomless Club and it's run by a very very traditional catholic um, but it's kind of like a speakeasy and it looks nothing like you would expect in rome there are uh there are skulls there's alligators there's um here i'm going to turn you guys around again i'm going to try i'm on two devices so if, just so you can see like there's the bar, nice big leather chairs. There is a um, there's a tattoo shop in here. If you could see on the back wall there, there's a leopard. <laughs> I think that's a leopard. Maybe it's a cheat. I don't know. There is a snake right beside me. And then if I look over here, you can see there is a skull under the bar and an alligator. So it's a great place. Um, put you back down. They're about to close here, so I'm gonna have to wrap it up. Let me turn you back around. So yeah, Wisdomless Club. It's a great place. You can find them on Instagram. Uh, the owner of the bar, his name is Fabrizio. He is Tristam Shandy on Instagram. Um, but great place a lot of Vatican people hang out here um, a lot of journalists a lot of Latin mass people so uh, I have a few more minutes if you have questions but I have to be out of here by 6 because of the new rules if you missed that at the beginning Rome is like on lockdown light so we now have a curfew between 12 p.m. and 5 a.m. We have to be at home unless we have a reason for being out. Um, bars, restaurants, cafes, they all have to close by 6 p.m. to the public. They can actually still do takeout, uh, but they can't have people seated. Can Americans travel here yet? No, nobody, no. There's actually more restrictions on travel now. So Italy has been open to Europe. 
Um, but certain countries like the UK, I think France, Croatia, um, they all have to be tested before they can arrive and then they can also be retested once they get here. So yeah, I, I do have to chug Monica. Uh, Laura asks about African-American Cardinal. Yeah, that's Archbishop Gregory. He's from Atlanta. That's my home diocese. There are plenty of, or there are a lot, there are a lot of African Cardinals. Some of the headlines have been misleading. Um, but he is the first black American Cardinal, I guess. Um, what else? Any other questions? Um, let's see. This Oh, this past Saturday I did a walk with my patrons. I, I was supposed to go to Santa Croce, but they were having some event. My hair's doing something weird again. Um, they were having some event, so I ended up taking my patrons to St. Mary Major and Santa Brasede. I uh, did a church tour for them. And so if you're interested in becoming a patron, you can do that on my website, catholictraveler.com. And all the, the walking tours I do for them, they're archived, so you can always watch them later um, if you're interested in that. And I think I'm going to do another one this week uh, just because they're so much fun. I just like doing the live events where I show people churches. And my patrons are buying things like drinks and my food because I don't have another job right now. So I greatly appreciate all of you. Um, what else? We have like 10 more minutes. Uh, again, I had to do it early today because of the quarantine thing. Uh, Daniela, did I? No, I did not participate in any of those masses. I was going to go to the one at St. Peter's, um, but I wasn't able to get in. Uh, I don't know if I didn't get there in time or what, but they had the piazza blocked off after the Angelus. So I did not make it to any of those masses. Um, what else? Oh, it was great. We loved it. Yeah, it was fun. Be I actually liked that we didn't get to do the church that I had tried to do for the patrons because it made it kind of more exciting. We had to jump in a taxi and go across Rome. I like it when things don't work out and then they do. Um, Amanda, you're Catholic light. You'll be Catholic soon too. Um, what else? Looks like they gave me some bar snacks. They did. I always tell them don't to give don't give me food because I'm not going to eat while I'm talking to you. And they always bring food anyway. Aperitivo, if you don't know, um, in Italy you can go to like any restaurant, any bar, and have a drink like this Negroni. It's a little more expensive here because it's a fancy bar, but most places it's five euro six seven euro and they'll bring you out food and sometimes it's enough food for dinner uh loretta pray for you okay i'll do that um i am gonna have to wrap it up because everybody's leaving otherwise we'll get arrested have i been to san giovanni i have not seen padre pio in san giovanni but a few years ago they brought him to rome they took him on tour and i had two groups two back-to-back -back groups um, and so we were able to see Padre Pio at San Lorenzo, which is uh, a Capuchin church, and then also at St. Peter's. So I have seen his body like right up close, but I have not been to San Giovanni. Can I please post, post what, the, the live? The live will be posted. Um, how about Sienna? What about Sienna? I don't, I don't know the, the whole question. Sorry. I'm reading comments on both before I get booted out of here. Uh, DJ asks, in addition to Pope Francis, what religious figure was I excited to meet? Uh, I was super excited to meet Pope Benedict. Um, probably the most. Um... 
Okay, what else? Thanks for another Tipsy Tuesday. Thanks for watching Tipsy Tuesday. If nobody was watching, I wouldn't be doing it. Um, will there be any special services for All Saints Day? Um, like, not, not papal masses. I mean, we'll have masses all around Rome, because um, our masses haven't ended. But uh, papal liturgies, no public papal liturgies. In fact, just yesterday, the Holy Father uh, said that, well, I guess he didn't say, the Vatican said, there will not be any public Christmas liturgies at the Vatican. Um, hopefully, we will still have them in Rome, um, but the papal liturgies will not be open to the public. Um, didn't mind the earlier start? Good, I'm glad. Um, have I been to Siena? Yes, I've been to Siena. I talked about earlier St. Catherine's Head. So when I when this is over, I'll post it. You can go back and watch. Um, but yeah, I love going to Siena. I love taking people to Siena. One of my favorite restaurants is Siena. My dad says hi. Hi, Dad. Um, okay. uh, has the Pope's statement on civil marriage been in the news? Yes. And there's been no clarification on that yet. Richard, your baby turns three on All Saints Day. That's awesome. Happy birthday. Do, do I let the bar know what I'm doing? Uh, yes, I told her. Sorry, I was, I was reading two comments at once. Yeah, I told her what I was doing ahead of time. They don't care. Um, so yeah, they're okay with it. What else? I think I need to start wrapping it up because I have 10 minutes to pay and get out of here. Early start works great because you have therapy at 12.15. Oh, you can only watch 15 minutes? That's sad. I'll have to do a special Tipsy Tuesday just for you. Um, so next week, Tipsy Tuesday may be from my home because I mentioned this at the beginning, but the time change here, our time change this past weekend. So your time changes next weekend. So I can't have Tipsy Tuesday at like 8 a.m. for you. So uh, I may do it at home. It was gonna be at home today and then I decided I was gonna go support the local bars because they're struggling right now. Um, how can you donate? That's a very good question. If you go to my website, thecatholictraveler.com, you can sign up there to be a patron. And if you have something else in mind, you can just email me. Um, uh, that's it. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go pay. Oh, she's making another drink. Not for me. I can't do three drinks. Um, but I am gonna wrap it up so that I can let them close or whatever they have to do. Hope you enjoyed today's Tipsy Tuesday. Again, my website, thecatholictraveler.com. You can sign up for my email newsletter. Uh, I send that out to like 47,000 people every month or so. And this week I'm sending out the one that'll basically talk about what we just talked about. Saint body parts and crypts and creepy things. So thanks for watching. It's good to see you. I'm glad that you all showed up an hour early and hope you enjoyed Wisdomless because it's an awesome place. So cheers. I'll see you on Second Cup Saturday maybe. And uh, oh yeah. This is going to be a podcast. I mentioned that. Um, these are all going to be available for you to listen by via podcast soon. I'm going to talk about this week, so I'll let you know. Okay, bye.